To survive, New Bedford is trying to remake itself into a tourist attraction. Its historic district has been restored to the way it looked when Herman Melville shipped out of here in 1847. In the middle of the old town stands the Seaman's Bethel. It inspired Melville to write a scene that was recreated in the 1956 screen adaptation of his novel, Moby Dick. Herman Melville's words still have much to say about those who challenge the natural order of the sea. I fear the Lord, cries Jonah, the God of heaven who hath made the sea and the dry land. Again, the sailors mark him. Now behold Jonah, taken up as an anchor and dropped into the sea, into the dreadful jaws awaiting him. Today, the Seaman's Bethel is a popular tourist attraction. Though its pulpit is a modest recreation of a movie set, the chapel's ancient walls are authentic. Filled with Portuguese names and ghostly memories, this is the Wall of the Disappeared. And these are the names of the people who sailed away and never came back. But if New Bedford becomes nothing more than a tourist attraction, like Aveiro, we will have lost something far more precious than a fishing fleet. We are people of the sea. And when that gets lost, it would be as important a loss as if for some reason we lost our relationship with the land. We certainly don't want to lose the forms of knowledge that we've gained over hundreds and thousands of years of having some kind of relationship with the oceans and with the seas. The loss of the Atlantic cod is also a cautionary tale for fisheries around the world, especially now that scientists have discovered that we are consuming the final 10% of the planet's large fish. Just think about that. 90% of our large fish are already gone. This raises a fundamental question that is at the very heart of our investigation. Is it within our power to undo the damage that we have already done.